Good morning everybody and welcome to our service this morning. We are using the Northumbrian service which you will find on page 12 of your blue book from St Peter's. So let us just take a moment in silence to come before God. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. We spend some time in silence as we come before God to confess our sins and seek his forgiveness. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 121, and you will find it on page 15 of the notice sheet. We say it together. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now Veronica is going to read our first reading. 
The reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, lines 1 to 7. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favour in the wilderness. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again, you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Veronica. We now say together the canticle on page 14. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks to me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Now Amanda's going to bring us a reading from the Gospel. Our Gospel reading today is from Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only the lost chief of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you, Amanda. And we're now going to hear a reflection from Rachel. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Today's reading makes for rather uncomfortable reading, doesn't it? Jesus' attitude appears somewhat contrary to what we might expect. It's all rather shocking. It looks as though Jesus is refusing to help someone in need and refusing on the grounds that she is the wrong race. It seems as though the issue of race is always current. But the thing here is, Jesus' fundamental mission is being defined, underlined if you like. Jesus' mission is very specific. His message is aimed at Israel, 
that was God's purpose. Right through the Old Testament and the reason he sends his son to the Jewish people. For Jesus to deviate from this purpose might give rise to the implication that God had made a mistake. We might have tried to whitewash the specialness of Israel in the purposes of God. The New Testament writers never did. Jesus himself certainly never implied anything different. Let's not forget that God's message was always for the whole of creation, but it was to come through the people of Israel, his chosen people. So Israel had to hear the message first. But as with so much of Jesus' public career, the future keeps breaking into the present. Enter the Canaanite woman. We never know her name. All we learn of her is that she has a sick daughter, she is clever, and above all, she has a great faith. In the passages that precede this one, Jesus has once again been taking a swipe at the Pharisees. He has spoken of false teachers, and not surprisingly, he has upset and offended the religious leaders. Nick Fawcett gives voice to one of those Pharisees in his book, A Most Amazing Man, which I'm going to read from now. He was having a go again, and we were incensed, disgusted, for he was undermining not just us, but the law and the prophets, the very fabric of our faith. Take away our commandments, our rituals refined over the years, and where will we, th we be then, I ask you? Like everyone else, that's where. No different from the common herd as unclean and unworthy as any. So what was he thinking of, contradicting our customs like that, rewriting our rules, as if he could see into our heart and judge between good and bad, right and wrong? Instead of questioning what came out of our mouth, he should have looked to his own. For his teaching was madness, heresy, leaving even his own disciples concerned. Yet, if they could see where his words were leading, apparently he couldn't. For when some Canaanite woman turned up seeking his help, he applauded her faith, as though a Gentile, a heathen, could teach us of God, as though all it takes to earn his favour is to express trust and admit need. Can't mean that, of course, for it would open the door to all and sundry, to anyone and everyone becoming his people. And surely not even Jesus would go that far, would he? What we are given here, what those listening to Jesus were given was an object lesson in faith. In order to teach this object lesson in faith, Jesus initially does not reply. But the woman is not deterred. And Jesus had no intention of deterring her faith. When the disciples urge Jesus to send her away, Jesus explains to the woman that his present mission is for the Jews alone. This does not deter the woman. She is confident of Jesus' ability and willingness to help. She persists with her request. Even when Jesus likens her to a dog, she isn't deterred. Her response is clever and insightful. Even the dogs are entitled to the crumbs that fall from their master's table. What an object lesson and a telling comparison from the faith of the Pharisee. Let us pray. Teachers, Lord, that it was not just those in centuries past who presumed they could neatly package your will into laws and commands that is not simply others who make the mistake of thinking the essentials of faith can be reduced to rules and regulations. Help us to see that in our own way, we all do it, attempting to fit you into neat categories that say more about us than about you. Open our minds to wider horizons, viewpoints at variance with our own thoughts, with our own, through which you are able to speak, challenge and guide. Above all, open our hearts to you and to the many ways you choose to work 
so often exceeding our expectation or imagining. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. Now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you'll find on page 15. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You will find today's collect on page 15 of your notice sheet. We pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, so that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Rachel's going to bring us the intercessions. These are actually Alison's prayers. She should have been praying this, this morning and uh, wasn't able to come at the last moment. So um, she sent her prayers across. So let us pray in the confidence that God will listen to our voice and grant our requests. Holy Father, in your power, you send us out to be your faithful witnesses in the world and to do your will. We pray for your church throughout the world. Look in mercy on your people and break down the barriers which keep us from you and from each other. Strengthen us in our faith. Give us grace and pour the gifts of your Holy Spirit upon us, that the world may believe that you sent your Son to be our Saviour. May we remember that, although the church building remains closed, we are the living body of Christ in the world. We pray for the leaders and members of St. Peter's Church, past and present. We give thanks for the fellowship we enjoy in Chelliston between the three churches, and we pray for each other now. We pray too for those who do not know you, asking that you pour your Holy Spirit upon them, and reveal your love to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of the world and of all, us all, in your wisdom and joy, you choose us to go out and bear fruit. We give you thanks for the world which you have made, the world we inhabit and will pass on to future generations. May we learn to value your gifts and share the world's resources. Unite all races and nations of the world and help us to put an end to the prejudices and differences which divide us, so that we may all live together without enmity or fear. Guide the steps of those who are oppressed or persecuted for their race, colour or religion, and those whom society rejects. May their dignity be respected and their rights upheld. May your Holy Spirit rest on all those who bear responsibility as leaders of the nations and grant them wisdom and understanding that they may promote your peace in the world. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of us all, in your love you invite us to be your friends and call us by name. We commend to you our families and all those dear to us, our friends at school and work, the members of our community, those we see often and those we see rarely. Deepen our understanding of the needs of others so that we may by our actions and our prayers show that we care for them as much as you care for us. Pour out your grace upon us all. Protect us and keep us safe from harm and bring us the joy that comes from knowing you and your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope and healing, in your love you value every one of us. Bless all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, the weak and vulnerable, the lonely and isolated. Anyone who has woken up to another day filled with anxiety or fear of what the future holds. In their weakness or anxiety, draw near to them, comfort and support them, give them hope in their troubles, and touch them with your healing power. Bless all those whom you have called to share in your son's ministry of healing as doctors and nurses, and for those engaged in medical research. Grant them your patience, sympathy and skill. Today we pray for those on the traffic light prayer list and for anyone known to us quietly by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of everlasting life, in your love you rose from the dead to bring us to everlasting life. We pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones, and we give thanks for their lives and rejoice in the certainty that they are now with you in your loving embrace in heaven, where we will join them. We pray for the families and friends of those who have died recently and those who miss them. Today we pray for Alan Keep, Dora, Fred Phillips, Audrey Harrison, Greta Erdley, Brian Cripps, Val Cole, and Christine's husband's sister's partner. We pray for all who have died this week from the virus and we remember all those dear to us whom we see no longer. Let us remember too those who die every day in war, from hunger or in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a few moments of quiet, let us bring before you our own particular prayers and petitions. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. So let us say the peace on page 17 of your service book. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you, through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.
the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and keep you safe this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.